now I'm just going to talk a little bit about the sensors that we have um, on the trust itself. So we have three types of sensors. We have load cells, strain gauges, and displacement transducers. And the sensors are numbered from left to right, numbers one to two for the load cells, and one through four for both the strain gauges and the displacement transducers. So the load cells that we have here and here are called SB load cells, and they're actually built into the truss itself. So these are numbered corresponding to the channels in the DAC module as number one and number two. And you will see that information on the uh, schematic that we're going to upload to you. We also have four strain gauges. They're located here, number one, number two here, number three here, and number four here. And then finally, we have four displacement transducers. Placement transducers again are numbered one, two, three, and four from left to right. And the displacement transducers are held uh, in place by this upper member here, which is not actually part of the truss itself. It's just there to keep the displacement transducers in place. And the sensors themselves are spring loaded so that they remain in contact with the upper member of the truss. Okay, now that we've seen the sensor's locations and their correct numbering, we're going to look a little bit more at the data acquisition module so that we can see how it's ultimately fed into the computer. So, data acquisition module is located here. We have all of our sensors that are being brought into these modules as shown. The first two modules here are both model SCC SG01. Both of these modules are associated with the strain gauge measurements. So, two strain gauges into this module, two strain gauges into this module. The next three modules are associated with the load cells and the displacement transducers. This first SCC SG24 is associated with the load cells, both load cells one and two. These next two SCC SG24s are associated with both of the displacement transducers. Again, if you look at this, this is an older data acquisition system. You can see the relative size is much larger than what we've seen with some of the more sophisticated uh, USB plug and play data acquisition systems. This module then feeds to the computer, which allows LabVIEW to record. Now that we've seen the sensors and we've seen the data acquisition module, we're gonna take a little bit more in-depth look at the LabVIEW code so we can see how the signals come in, how we process those signals, and ultimately record the signals. So now if we take a look, what we have is the front panel of our LabVIEW code. We can see that again, we have three different measurements. We have a chart that's associated with each of our measurements. The first chart we have is our strain. Key thing there is that our strain is going to be in micro strain. Then we have our displacement transducers, also known as linear potentiometers. That displacement is going to be in inches. And then finally we have our load cells, which is going to display force in pounds. If we look at these fields on the left hand side, and we also look at the buttons that are associated with these, these are zero functions. So when we have a zero value of reading on the instrumentation before any load is applied, we're gonna zero out the values so that we start with zero load, zero strain, and zero displacement at those initial readings. Once we've zeroed out our values, then we have readings that will be in relation to that zero value. As we apply load, these arrays will give us the values of strain, displacement, and load in the corresponding arrays each of those, again, are, have a nomenclature that are associated with the truss left to right, one to four, one to four, and one to two. The applied load here is a user input field. So as we apply a variation of load, we'll manually type in that load, and then we'll be able to record what the applied load was as well as the measured output. If we look at our block diagram, we have the behind the scenes programming on how all of this is occurring. We have the input from our data acquisition modules, and then each of those sensors go to have signal processing. We have our zero functions, which again, take a initial value at the zero load input to normalize the values. The strain, we have our conditioning block, which accounts for the resistance of the strain gauge, the gauge factor and the excitation voltage for the displacement sensors as well as the load cells. We have our sensitivities that are input so that we're able to take the reading and progress that from a voltage input 
into a actual measured input again, either in micro strain, load in pounds or displacement in inches. And then finally, we're able to write to file again with our user input load so that we have the applied load as well as the measured values at each load step.